In the previous videos when we've been doing these calculations, we did one step conversions where we were looking at grams to moles or moles to moles or moles to particles. You will get more complex, com more complex problems where we have to do more than one step. Here we're going to practice two step, two step conversions looking um, from grams to moles to particles and vice versa. Notice that uh, we have two arrows here from grams to moles and from moles to particles. Um, to get from grams to moles, we have to use our molar mass and the number of moles should, or one mole to the number of grams should be on top. To get from moles to particles, we have to use Avogadro's number such that the number of particles is on top and the number of moles is on the bottom. If we're going in the reverse direction from particles to moles, then we have to make sure our numbers of moles or one mole is on the top and particles on the bottom. And to convert from moles to grams, grams have to be on top and moles on the bottom when we're doing these conversions. I will do the first one with you and you can practice doing the next one on your own. Let's start so we can see uh, how to set up this problem. I've already given you the road map, but let's take a look at the problem so that you can determine, so you can understand how to use the road map. How many atoms are there in 14.3 grams of xenon? So before you can determine what the road map is, you gotta write what you're given. <clears throat> I was given 14.3 grams of xenon. And what I need is the number of atoms of xenon. Well, I've got to first get from grams to moles using my molar mass. Then I have to get from moles to particles or atoms using my Avogadro's number. So we're going from grams of A, moles of A, to particles of A. Right? You always start with what you're given. So I want to know the number of atoms of xenon. And what I was given is 14.3 grams of xenon. You've got to take a look at your periodic table to get the molar mass of xenon. The molar mass is 131.29 grams per one mole. Notice that I wrote moles on top so that I can cancel out my grams. Let's go ahead and cancel those out right quick. So make sure that we're going in the right direction. And the second conversion that we have to do because we're left with moles, and now we want atoms. So one mole it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of xenon. Checking ourselves, we see that moles of xenon cancel out, and our only units left is atoms. Putting all of this into our calculator, remember, uh, you put in just the coefficient for the 6.02 times 10 to the 23 and add in your power of 10 later. So we put all that into the calculator. I get 0 0.656 carrying this, this 10 to the 23 and I get 10 times, times 10 to the 23. In order to correct this, to make it correct scientific notation, I move my decimal place over by one and I get 6.36, and since my coefficient got larger, my exponents must get smaller, and I only move my decimal place by one, so it gets smaller by one. So I have 6.36 times 10 to the 22 atoms. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It should be 6.36. 5, 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of xenon. Now you pause the video, solve the next problem on your own, 
and I'll come back and give you the answers. All right, let's check your answer. Question says, how many grams are in 5.65 atoms of boron? So what we're given is 5.65 times 10 to the 35 atoms of boron, and I need grams of boron. Well, I'm given atoms. I need to convert from atoms to moles of boron, and from moles of boron to grams of boron. So I'll need these two conversions, starting with Avogadro's numbers first, with the moles on top, and then grams over mole, or the molar mass with grams on top. So you start with what you're given, 5.65 times 10 to 35 atoms. Avogadro's number is placed where I have moles on top of atoms. And then I use my molar mass, which is 10.81 grams per one mole of boron. Put everything into your calculator and you get 1.01 times 10 to the 13 grams of boron. Let's take a look at the last problem here. How many atoms of nitrogen are there in 1.2 grams of aspartame? Okay, so we're given, we're given 1.2 grams of aspartame and we need we need the number of atoms okay well starting with grams I can only compare moles to moles so if I start with grams I've got grams of aspartame oh, let me make that up I've got grams of aspartame and I need to convert that to moles of aspartame so first I'm going to need the I'm going to need molar mass. That's the first thing I'm going to need. The second conversion I'm going to need is because I need to get from moles of moles of um, aspartame to find moles of nitrogen. And so for that I'm going to need a molar ratio. Sorry about that. That's horrible looking. I'm going to need the molar ratio. And then finally, since we need to go from moles, moles to particles, I need Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. All right? And we have to make sure we put these conversions in the right order to get what we need. So, okay, let's solve our problem. So we need to know the number of atoms. Oh, we need to know the number of nitrogen atoms, right? So the number of nitrogen atoms, we're gonna start with what we're given, 1.2 grams of aspartame. Here's where writing out everything that you have is important. So for, remember our molar mass of aspartame, which was 294.34 grams of aspartame per one mole of aspartame, right? And I can cancel out grams and I'm left with moles of aspartame. Now I need to have a molar ratio um, from our balance, from our chemical formula and there are two moles of nitrogen per one mole of aspartame. So one mole of aspartame to two moles of nitrogen and then we want to know how many atoms of nitrogen. So if I have one mole of nitrogen I'm always going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 nitrogen atoms. And that's true for any substance that is a mole. All right, let's make sure everything cancels out so we get what we're looking for. Moles of aspartame canceled out 
leaving us with moles of nitrogen. Moles of nitrogen cancel out, leaving us with nitrogen atoms. And plug everything into your calculator. Remember, I don't put in our power of 10. So in my calculator, I ended up with this value. And, um, and I'm just going to take that power of 10 and bring it down here. And to make sure that we have the correct scientific notation, I'm going to move my decimal place over two times to the right. That makes my coefficient larger by two. So my power of 10 gets smaller by two. And then that is 4.9 times 10 to the 21 nitrogen atoms. Pause the video and try a more simple two-step problem here on the slide and we'll come back and make sure you got the right answer. Okay, let's check your answer. The question is asking how many molecules of aspartame are in 0 0.50 grams? So we're going from grams to moles to particles. So we'll need two conversions. We're gonna need the molar mass and Avogadro's number. So starting with what you're given, you start with 0 0.005 grams of aspartame and we use our molar mass where one mole is on top of 2.94, 294.34 grams. Um, taking a look, we can see that <clears throat> grams of aspartame cancel out, leaving us with moles. And then we need Avogadro's number with the molecules on top, moles on the bottom. Make sure that we cancel out properly. Moles of aspartame cancel out with moles of aspartame and I'm left with molecules of aspartame in my answer. And remember, <clears throat> um, I plug in all the numbers and leave my power of 10 to the end. So I end up with 0 0.000102 times 10 to the 23. And <clears throat> to put that in correct scientific notation, I'm going to move my decimal place one, two, three, four. My coefficient gets larger by four decimal places. So that means my power of 10 gets smaller by four. So we end up with 1.02 times 10 to the 19 molecules of aspartame.